Hi, pleasure to be here. Uh, I usually like to look at my audience, and now I see all I see is these very bright lights, but maybe I'll adjust. Uh, one of the things about this talk is I'm going to ask you to do a bit of thinking and interacting yourself, uh, so please be ready for that. I was asked to start off by talking a little bit about myself. Uh, I am an academic physician. Uh, my conviction is that research evidence should guide clinical practice, and that is uh, a lot of my career has been involved in trying to find better ways to get research evidence to guide clinical practice. Uh, when I talk to the lay public about this, uh, they are rather mystified. Uh, they're mystified because they think, well, wasn't it always that way? Wasn't it always that research evidence guided clinical practice? Well, uh, that's unfortunately not the case. Most people are surprised that physicians, until relatively recently, had no idea how to interpret the evidence from the medical literature. And furthermore, and perhaps even more troubling, that the people writing guidelines that guided clinical practice had no idea or very little idea how to interpret evidence. And so my effort has been to uh, try and remedy a situation because if people have no idea how to interpret evidence, it leaves both physicians and patients vulnerable, vulnerable to, for instance, hype from drug companies and other people uh, selling various ideas or various ways of practice. So the solution we have called evidence-based medicine, and evidence-based medicine is, among other things, uh, has the principle of uh, finding the best way to use evidence to guide clinical practice for things like medicine and surgery. But we have tried to extend that to health policy, and what I'm going to talk to you about today is an aspect of evidence-based health policy. And what you may find is that what you read in the newspapers is not necessarily the best evidence about what's going on in healthcare in Canada. So the issue I'm going to address is the sustainability of Canadian healthcare, uh, which is an issue that's been around for uh, quite a while and a lot of emphasis recently. So we hear dire warnings of out of control healthcare spending. We hear that an aging population is going to exacerbate this problem and that other social spending is gonna be crowded out by healthcare spending. I'd like to suggest to you that there may be a not so hidden agenda behind these calls, uh, and that is that we can't afford single payer universally publicly funded health care, which we have now for physician and hospital services, uh, that we need more private pay, and ultimately that is going to lead to a two tier health care system. So, in thinking about this issue, I'd like you to consider issues of economic growth. Uh, what you, the apparent implicit message of much of what you hear is healthcare spending threatens the economy. Or does it? Consider what happens if Canada produces and consumes 10,000 more SUVs in the course of a year. Uh, that would typically be heralded uh, by, uh, slides are not working quite the way they did when I prepared, uh, 10,000 uh, television sets or 10,000 hip replacements. The uh, SUVs and the television sets would be unequivocally heralded as a celebration. The Canadian economy is growing. Economic growth is a good thing. Whereas the 10,000 hip replacements would say, oh my goodness, we are spending more in healthcare. What a worry, even though our economy has also grown. So consider the upsides and downsides of the economic growth uh, that is a result of each of these. And do we really need to be terribly, to celebrate the first two and be worried about the third? So can Canada afford universal public health care? So one question I'd like you to think about is how this is framed. Let's say we should be concerned about costs of health care. Should we be concerned about the costs 
to society as a whole or only public funding. So some healthcare we pay for privately, that contributes to the total cost, and there is public spending, costs, healthcare, and public spending. So I think I can see well enough that I might be able to see when you put your hands up now, who thinks it's the total cost of healthcare to, the, to society that we should be concerned about? Who thinks it's just public costs? Hands up. Okay. We have a split. I think it was a majority. Uh, there were, the hands went up cautiously, perhaps a difficult question, but I think it was more total cost. Well, it turns out that that's a crucial issue to which we will return. Okay, now I'm going to ask you to actually shout out, if you can manage, how can we establish affordability and sustainability? It's a question. Is it sustainable? How can we answer that question? What evidence or data could we look to that would bear on answering the question of sustainability? Any thoughts? Okay, what to understand what's driving cost increases? Excellent. Any other thoughts? Overall GDP trends. Overall GDP trends. Okay, I like that one. So. Uh, if we decide our own, how sustainable are our lifestyles? The cars we buy, where we live, the vacations we take, um, uh, entertainment and so on, is this sustainable or not? Well, the only way of judging that is in relation to our income, right? We have a huge big income, we can sustain things that we can't if we have a small income. And it's the same with healthcare in Canada. One way of thinking about this is our income is our GDP, and how much of our GDP are we spending on health care? This tracks our health care spending over the last 40 years or so. The red line, now let's see if I can, there we are. The red line is public health care spending. So those of you who say we should only be concerned about this would focus on this line, and this is total health care spending. And what you see that has happened over the years is that there is an upward trend on both public and total spending, but it isn't a, a straight line. Rather, it has bumps and uh, flat periods. The flat period, health care has actually grown on average about 3 to 4 percent per year, and that's been pretty consistent. But the flat parts are when the economy is growing at 3 to 4 percent per year, so health care as a proportion of GDP does not rise. A period of up like this is a recession when the economy slows and health care spending continues to rise, and as a result, it increases as a proportion of health care spending. Late 80s, we had another recession, it bumped up. And then something extraordinary happened that has happened only in Canada, nowhere else in the industrialized world. The government got very upset about deficits. Uh, Paul Martin cut back uh, transfers to the provinces. Uh, the economy then started to grow, but health care spending for a few years did not. And we actually went from 10% to 9% of our GDP. Um, uh, uh, extraordinary and in international uh, in terms of other countries. And then recently we have been playing catch up, and then you have a big bump here of the recession uh, of several years ago, and then fallen slightly in the latest. I'd like you to focus, those of you uh, who are particularly concerned about public spending, on what's happening here. Uh, in 1992, so 20 years ago, we were spending about 7% of our GDP on public health care, and now we are spending less, 20 years later, we're spending less than 8% of our GDP on health care. In terms of total, it's gone from 10 to less than 12%. So 20-year period, an increase in public spending from 7 to less than 8% of our GDP on health care. I'm going to suggest another way we can judge sustainability, which is how we're doing relative to the rest of the world. In 1992, we were spending 10% of our GDP on health care, which put us second to the United States, which always leads all industrialized countries as a proportion of GDP they spend on health care. 
uh, several, just a few between nine and ten, and many between eight and nine. So we were second. Well, what's happening in the latest figures, close to 20 years later, we have been relatively constrained in comparison to other countries in terms of growth of our health care spending. The U.S. is still way ahead, but we now have a number of countries between uh, 10 and 11 percent who are uh, spending more than we are as a percentage of GDP, and we're going, we're more or less in the middle of the pack. Particularly note France, after the United States, it's second uh, in terms of percentage of GDP spent on health care. And another thing we should know is the proportion of our health care spending that is public coming out of our tax dollars rather than private. And you will hear some people characterize the Canadian system as socialist, uh, with all the public spending on health care. Well, in fact, among the OECD uh, high-income countries, we are in the lower two-thirds. We're spending 70% uh, of our health care funding comes from publicly. Most other European countries are between 70 and 80 percent, and some over 80 percent. So we're actually spending less in terms of health, our proportion of our health care expenditures are public relative to other high-income countries. And we've done it in an odd way relative to other countries. Um, we spend, as I've just said, 70 percent comes publicly, but physician and hospital services almost totally publicly covered, whereas if you go to our drugs, long-term care, and particularly dental, it's a very small proportion. Other countries, Germany and France, with 76 percent of its expenditures funded publicly, it's more even across these areas rather than the Canadian oddity of uh, funding publicly physician and hospital services and leaving much of the rest to a U.S. style mixed funding system and some of it like dental services almost totally private. So you may be getting the picture that runaway health care costs do not, that the characterization of runaway health care costs in fact don't reflect the reality of what is happening. But you may have heard that health care is devouring provincial budgets. And if we don't worry, if we don't do something about it, we have a worry that it will consume provincial budgets completely, crowding everything out. So for instance, in 1980, health care was 30% of the Ontario budget. And in 2004, it was 44%. Well, in 2009, it's actually less than it was in 2004. That, again, doesn't look like it's, uh, 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 it's uh, gobbling up the budget. Uh, but there is this big change from 30 to 44 percent. And you may say, but public health, you've just shown us that uh, public spending on health care only went from 7 to less than 8 percent of the GDP over a 20-year period. Uh, why is it that it's gone uh, from 30 to 42 percent of the budget? Well, I'll tell you a story that sort of uh, captures an analogous story. You have a family of four, and they spend 25 percent of their uh, budget on each of the four, including two kids and two parents. One of the kids leaves home, gets a job, doing fine, doesn't need any of the family budget anymore. And the family, the parents sit down at dinner with the kid, and they say, and they're shaking their heads and looking quite concerned, and the kid says, what's wrong? And uh, the parents say, geez, I don't know, you're not sustainable anymore. Kid says, what do you mean? Parents say, you used to be taking up 25% of the budget, now you're taking up 33%, something you're not sustainable. Well, it's what's happened here. It isn't that we're spending more on health care. It's that we're spending less on everything else. And why is that? The picture here is the last couple of decades, close to a couple of decades now, um, have been an era of tax cuts. So if you go back um, to 
uh, around 1990, we were spending 45% of our national wealth on public expenditures. That has dropped dramatically. It's bumped up again with the stimulus spending a bit, but it's still substantially less. So what's happened is we have cut public expenditures while maintaining public expenditures on health care. So as a proportion, it goes up. So what are we spending less on? Uh, if you go back 20 years or so, we were spending half a percent of our GDP on universities. It's now less than 0.2 percent. Employment insurance used to cover 80 percent of Ontarians. Now it's 40 percent. Uh, Mike Harris cut social support dramatically, and the subsequent governments have not brought it up again. Uh, you hear concerns about urban infrastructure. We're spending less than that. Canada used to have a national subsidized housing program. It doesn't anymore. But now you may say, okay, we have all these pressures. How do others do it? So if you take France, for instance, uh, I've already told you they spend a higher proportion of their GDP on health care. Furthermore, they spend a higher proportion of the, on their health care. It's funded more, a higher proportion publicly funded. We're 70%, they're 76%. And in terms of the aging population curve, they're ahead of us. How do they do this? More spending per GDP, greater proportion public spending, farther ahead on the aging curve. How do they do it? Any thoughts? Higher taxes, that's the way you do it. All right, so the point being that our health care crisis in terms of spending and taking away from other things is all about the Canadian decision to reduce the proportion of our national wealth that is public, that is to reduce taxes. So let's say tomorrow we allow private payment for quicker, better physician and hospital care. What do you think the effect on health care expenditures are going to be? You let people pay for better care. Are the expenditures going to go, total expenditures going to go down, they're going to stay the same, or they're going to go up? Who thinks they'll go down? Who thinks they'll stay the same? Who thinks they'll go up? Ah, right. You're all right. Okay? And that's shown by a natural experiment. Uh, it, up until about 1970, Canada and the United States were spending about the same amount of their GDP in health care. It then started to separate about 1970. Who, 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 get, who likes to guess what happened in 1970? Uh, Tommy Douglas was a little bit before 1970, but uh, Tommy Douglas's message about Medicare got, went national in around 1970. That's when we had uh, universal coverage for physician and hospital services. That's when this separates, and it's just getting, the difference is getting uh, more and more. So for those of you who believe that it's not only public spending that we should worry about, but total spending, it's clear. What is not sustainable is private funding of health care because as you all put up your hands, it's going to drive up total spending and the natural experiment between Canada and the United States shows that. Let's say we accept that it's not sustainable. What does it mean? We can't afford high quality care for those who can't pay and those who can't pay are going to face longer wait times and poorer care. It also means we're ready to spend scarce resources on improving care for those who can pay, but not spend those same resources on improving care for those who cannot. So, is high quality universal health care sustainable? Bottom line messages, health care is a percentage of GDP. Public spending on health care has increased little, less than a percentage from seven to eight over 20 years. Canada was second in the pack in terms of health care expenditures 15 years ago. We've actually been very good at constraining it. We're now the middle of the pack internationally. Tax cuts not health care spending has compromised other social spending. Thanks very much.